Thank you, sir. Hafidei, good afternoon. The Committee on Health, Economic Development, Homeland Security, and Senior Citizen now convenes this public hearing. Public hearing notices were provided on um, first notice on Tuesday, February 23, 2016. Second notice on Friday, February 26, 2016. For the record, today is Tuesday, March 1st. The time now is 2.05 p.m. The committee will hear um, testimony on Bill 264-33, an act to amend subsection 68605 of Article 6, Chapter 68, and to add a new subsection 68602.1 to Article 6, Chapter 68, both of Division 2, Title 21, Guam Code Annotated, relative to the Southern Development Master Plan. It's introduced by Senator Tommy Morrison. Um, before we go on, I'd like to um, recognize all our uh, honorable mayors who are in the public hearing room today, Mayor Tayama, uh, Mayor um, Chargaloff, I think, um, Mayor Taitagui. Thank you very much. And to all of you, uh, for um, Mayor, Mayor Ad, of course, can't forget. That's right. So I also want to recognize uh, Senator Tommy Morrison to my left, Senator Frank Uggen Jr. to my right, and Senator Mary Torres. Um, thank you very much for, for joining us this afternoon and to the staff. Thank you for being here. So we'll go ahead and um, ask uh, Senator Morrison to give a, a brief summary of the bill and then um, ask you who had, test who had signed up to provide oral testimony to, to come forward as I call your name. Okay, Senator Morrison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to provide an overview of Bill number 264-33 LS. This measure proposes to get things moving with respect to Public Law 19-38, which, which called for the creation of the Southern Development Master Plan, a blueprint for growth in Southern Guam. With the North and Central Land Use Plan established several years ago, it is high time that a similar plan be worked on for our Southern communities. This plan was prepared by the ICF International with funding support by the National Ocean Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Ocean and Coastal Resource Management Grant administered by the Bureau of Stats and Plants. The cost for that, the Northern and Central Land Use Plan was over $100,000. As I've publicly stated, the ongoing debates surrounding pro the proposed large-scale projects in Agate and Zotnia highlight the importance of ensuring that the economic expansion throughout Southern Guam is carried out based on a responsible approach that supports, is supported by residents and village leaders. The Southern Development Master Plan must respect our environment and the needs of de and desires of residents, bring real and sustainable opportunities to families so that raising their children in the South can be an option once again. We need this plan to be upfront and in, in, also to the current business owners and potential investors, and also would complement what planners call the established characters of our southern investors or villages. Sorry. Since learning of the proposed developments in Agat and Zonia, a number of residents have not only voiced their concerns, they've also asked that a comprehensive approach be applied as we consider what kinds of economic activities should be embraced. The following are examples of comments and recommendations my office has received from the public on the importance of developing the Southern Development Master Plan. These comments came in via email and also through social media. One comment was to set a floor height requirement of no more than five stories for buildings within 2,000 feet from any shoreline. Developers and employers must have at least 50% of local hires. No qualifying certificates allowed. The disqualification of QCs would deter overdevelopment. Again, these are comments coming from the public. New business owners looking to buy land should be given tax breaks or something of the like to open their business in an existing building so, that, so as to not destroy the land further. Include in the bill a requirement to have a Southern Growth Board made of residents from the South, appointments by the governor and the legislature. Any proposed growth must be approved by this board. I encourage Southern village, Villages through the Mayor's Municipal Planning Council to develop their own growth strategies plan. Bring together the community 
residents to conduct sh some strategic planning and provide them with ideas, options, funding sources, etc. Unfortunately, we wait for these things to happen as we, push, as we continue to push it back. Why not be in the driver's seat and de be determined, and we determine what we would look like as our communities, our communities to look like, to be like for generations to come and not the other way around. Encourage our people, our children, to get involved in the future of our communities by requesting to be part of a planning process through our village mayor slash planning council. Envision a nonprofit providing support in the planning process. Perhaps we should form our, gro our own growth, smart growth committee for our southern villages and map out our future. Uh, these are just some notes that have been coming in through uh, uh, social media and also through our, our, our emails. Uh, Mr. Chair, I also want to point out, um, as I know the directors of the Bureau of Stats and Plans is here, that uh, we, we are very aware of uh, alarming data that uh, has come out of uh, the census 2010 that basically speaks to uh, four th approximately 4,000 residents from southern Guam uh, that have either moved central or north or off island. And, and it's clear, uh, Mr. Chair, that we, we, we have to be acceptable to real opportunities uh, and developers, investors that are looking down south and, and ensure that how we could uh, um, allow our residents to, to work with these investors and developers and see how we can help uh, uh, to grow the communities in the south and sustain these communities for our, our residents uh, to be able to live in their homes. Bill 64 uh, seeks to put the mayors in the driver's seat and, and, and to also drive this southern development plan. Uh, again, we are, you know, we know that uh, we are, there was some forward thinking um, in the 19th legislature um, and they, they saw and envisioned that the South would be an <coughs> attractive um, area to invest and, and grow uh, the communities and bring about economic opportunities. And uh, leaders then felt that the Southern Development and the Master Plan had to get done immediately. It's 20 years later, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and I thank the mayors for being here. I thank uh, Gita, the land management, and, and um, I believe GVB, I spoke with GVB um, as well, that, it, that we'll be providing testimony and, and to ensure that we, we really, really uh, focus our efforts uh, and, and not wait for another 20 years to get this plan done. I think it's high time that we really move on this and, and get this task force moving. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Senator. We call on Mayor Tayama, Will Castro, Mr. Borja, would you like to provide? Sir Randy Sablon, Mayor, you're at it. <coughs> okay, we have um, Mayor Chargalov. We'll call the next set up after. Mayor okay. Tayama. Buenas and half a day. I am Carol S. Tayama, Mayor of Agate. I come here today to testify wholeheartedly in favor of Bill 264-33. And I just like to say that uh, my colleagues, uh, the mayors of the South, also agree with, with what I have to testify on this afternoon. Uh, they... Um, we have spoken, and, and they agree with what, what, is going to, what I will be saying. It is about time that an entity is organized and created to oversee, comprehend, review, research, recommend, and participate in the ec economic development of the most pristine, beautiful, untouched, virgin properties and land area of our island. 
southern Guam. We owe most assuredly one growth and expansion to coincide with the needs of our residents and visitors. This growth and expansion, however, cannot and must not be a hit and miss. Pl place it here or there, or wow, that, so that sounds great. Why didn't I think of that type of development? It has to be a development that is fully vetted and reviewed by all concerned entities, agencies, and yes, residents of that particular village that will be impacted by such development. We cannot allow hodgepodge construction and development to be the rule of thumb. The rule of thumb must be concise, clear, and beneficial development, not just for today, but for generations to come. To mandate a mayor of the Southern Districts to chair the creation of a Southern Development Master Plan is the most logical start. Who knows better the views of both the older and the younger generations of that village than their mayor? After all, who knows better what the villagers are asking and looking for than their mayors? So yes, the person to spearhead and head the creation of the Southern Development Master Plan should be a mayor from Jonia, Talafofo, Inarahan, Mariso, Umatic, Agate, or Santa Rita. We already are on the right track with the passage of, by this body of Bill 218-33, which promotes greater participation of residents at public hearings and meetings concerning zone changes, conditional uses, variances, and sale or lease of government real estate. This bill embraced a concept that village municipal council members, along with this mayor and vice mayor, have input and ideas that must be heard and at the very least be respected. We applaud Senator Tommy Morrison, Senator Tony Ada. Senator Tina Munia Barnes, Senator Rory Respichu, Senator Frank Ogden Jr., Senator Brant McCready, and Senator Frank Bloss Jr. for introducing and co-sponsoring this piece of legislation that finally recognizes the South is just as important as anywhere else on Guam. Suzus mm Masi. -hmm. Thank you very much, Mayor. I was going to... Um, be a co-sponsor, but I went out to lunch, <laughs> so, so he didn't catch me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mayor. Yes, we I'm know mayor. you support us, <laughs> Thank you. Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Senator Rodriguez, uh, Senator Frank Ogan Jr., Tommy Morrison. Thank you for the phone call this morning, and uh, my lovely uh, Senator. Uh, Mary Camacho Torres. Uh, I, I just wanted to express a couple things because uh, I I'm in the middle of a lot of this and uh, I, I believe that this bill is a very good bill because it's very concise and it's a beginning start uh, the way the law is written right now is that the, the 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 developer has to have a public hearing right and so in this public hearing they wanted to apply for the height variance now uh, I, I firmly believe that the public kind of feels left out uh, prior to getting to that uh, the, I, and I believe that there, the contemporary issue is that there should be more, um, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, uh, display or uh, discovery before reaching any of those hearings. Um, uh, simply because people, when they hear the hearings, they're already applying for a height variance. And that's like for a lot of people, they feel that this is the first time they're hearing that there's going to be a development. And so they get a little reactive and uh, very passionate about it. And I uh, truly understand them so. But uh, I feel that they feel also that they didn't have the ample time to understand this and discover what it is happening until it reaches a point of uh, certainty when you're applying for a height zone variance. So I, I would like to see uh, somewhere in the laws or somewhere to be uh, extended to the people more. And this is a great start for that. And uh, 
there should be more uh, discovery in between the hearings, between the developer and the community, and not necessarily just lean on the mayors or the mayor municipal planning councils of certain villages, because again, like Mayor Tayana said, a lot of people have different different opinions on it. But what that serves as is a really good outlet for people to kind of compost all of the things, and uh, so that way it's uh, documented and uh, we can move forward. But this bill, I am very much in support of this bill. By, thank you, Tommy Morrison. And uh, I think it's a very good start for Southern Guam. And uh, this is uh, the future of Guam on the line. And this is really asking and uh, making the people of the Southern uh, villages more aware, number one. And number two, being having, having that opportunity that some people feel they weren't uh, amply given. So uh, in a... It, again, reiterating what Mayor Tayama said, uh, uh, this is a very good bill for uh, us to move forward. Thank you very much, Mayor. Mayor Chardler. Thank you, Senator. Good afternoon, Senator Ogden. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to put testimony here today. Senator Rodriguez, Senator Morrison, Senator uh, Torres. My name is Ernest Charla, and I'm the mayor of Marizo. From the, the last testimony I had was when we, you know, to empower the municipal planning council members. Well, it's just a merger and a marriage between the mayor and the municipal planning council members anyways. That's what we do, you know, with the members as it is, as it stands now. But it gives the, the, the mayor more oversight with, along with the municipal planning council members. That's what we're here for. And in previous testimony, I said, I hope that development that is going to come is not predetermined already. And then, you know, all these meetings that we're going to hold, whether it be here or at the village level, is just a matter of formality, following the, the basic steps of, of uh, what needs to be done before something is implemented. I hope it's not being implemented before it's already started. And, uh, you know, behind the scenes, this is one way to really get the engagement of the, the village mayors and the municipal planning council. But I, I still think that the, some of the equation has to, we got to listen, like Mayor Cow said, our residents as well. Because the mayor and, and the, granted that the mayor and the municipal planning council members may represent many of our villagers, but they don't, you know, they don't represent every one of them. We're going to have people that agree and disagree on what is being planned and what is going to be developed. And we can all agree to disagree. You know, we're not all going to agree and we're not all going to disagree. But we can all agree to disagree that we can come to a common uh, purpose so that we respect and we go forward in planned development rather than something that's already planned. You know, uh, development that will benefit the people. Because, you know, when you bring the commodities down, we don't have to drive up to Marisa uh, to Agana anymore. So some of them are saying, you, you build that here, it's going to affect. But if it's planned and it doesn't overburden the infrastructures or if it is, it's, it, it becomes a commodity uh, availability to our people because we don't have to drive up north where most of the commodities are at. So it, it brings uh, convenience. But with convenience comes a price to pay. Because you're going to affect the pristineness of, of our of our island, which is the south. And being that we're mayors and residents as well, we, we may be wearing two hats in the matter. One, one we want in one hat, we want our village to st stay as pristine as possible. On the other hat, we we want development too that will that would benefit the other residents who want convenience as well. So you cannot please all the people all the time and every people, and all, all of them, and, and, and all the matters that come before us. But as mayors, we have to come there and make the best decisions that will protect the interests of everybody concerned. Maybe, you know, not all the residents, but the majority of our people in our village, whether they're newborn or the eldest. But I, I agree, I totally agree with this bill. It just empowers the mayors in the South to join together because there's power, you know, there's power in numbers. And when you empower the mayors with their municipal planning council, 
and then you put the people behind them. This is the government of the people by the people for the people. So let's not have the the horse be found, uh, in front of, uh, you know, behind the carrots. Put the horse in front, and let's go for it. Because if we have the horse is going to push the carrots the wrong way, okay, instead of pulling it the right way. So I hope, like I said, we when we move forward, the planned developments are already planned, not not already in place. That is just let's go through the formality of the the process. But uh, as as mayors. We need to protect the integrity of our villages as well. And as long as it doesn't overburden and misplace people and, and uh, inconvenience people, I'm all for development. It's going to happen between you, whether I'm the mayor now, but progress and development is inevitable. It's going to come, but when it comes, we got to really look at it whether it's, we're going to haphazardly just put everything in place and then pay later. No, let's pay now. Don't regret later. Thank you. So I'm laughing because no antes no to tune este no program program and mizu. Ah, who facing senador Morrison like ko? Hey, munga no ma agong nga be na yam ju este no katakulo. Polo ay jangin po na este na opportunidad be tay tay hafagwagi kataku hafagwagi hinengeko. So I'm laughing, Senator. Um, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for the opportunity, Senators. Uh, Honorable Senators and uh, distinguished policymakers, uh, the intention here was to sit in support of the bill, but since you've given me the distinct privilege to share my thoughts, I'll go ahead and uh, read what I have prepared. <clears throat> the, Bureau, the Bureau of Statistics and Plans supports Bill 2643 with regard to the membership of the Southern Development Master Plan Task Force. BSP supports the development of a comprehensive plan that may bring further balance to economic development while maintaining Guam's rich cultural history and abundant natural resources inherent in the southern communities of Guam. BSP acknowledges that the village mayors significantly understand the needs, goals, and priorities of their respective communities, and how a responsible planning process that is holistic, inclusive, and comprehensive may benefit their constituents culturally, socially, and economically. While BSP, the Guam Economic Development Authority, and the Guam Visitors Bureau hold membership on the task force, I further recommend that the following agencies also be represented. The Department of Agriculture, Department of Parks and Recreation, and the Soil and Water Conservation Districts. These entities possess the expertise and knowledge to expand and promote a viable development plan for each of Guam's villages by providing valuable information and guidance regarding the protection of soil and water resources or by preserving agricultural land uses and crop production and enhancing park and recreation, recreational facilities usage. In closing, the Bureau of Statistics and Plans supports the passage of Bill 264-33. Sajus Masi. Thank you very much, Mr. Cascio. Mr. Borja? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, Senator Uggen, Senator Morrison, and S Senator Torres. My name is Mike Borja. I'm the Director of the Department of Land Management. While public law was enacted almost three decades ago to create a development master plan of the southern part of Guam, a plan that never came to fruition. This bill resets the intent of the law with a newly designated leadership of the task force placed on the mayors of the southern villages. The scope of the task is, is significant and it was previously funded. Today this bill only directs a task force to seek necessary funding to complete the task which will likely need professional and technical assistance. Additionally, since all mayors are up for election in this, uh, in this election cycle, I suggest that this task force not convene until 2017 when all mayors begin their new tenure. This is, a, this is necessary for continuity in the leadership of the task force. I would further recommend that the Bureau of Statistics and Plans provide all notes and drafts from any work performed by an earlier task force be made available to the Mayor's Council of Guam and all departments and agencies designated to be members of the task force. This will allow the membership to acquaint themselves with drafts and studies already completed. While this bill is well-intentioned, completion of the Southern Development Master Plan must reach a conclusion. Without any designated funding, however, it would appear that much effort will be placed in seeking funding before certain technical aspects could be completed. Therefore, it's imperative that new funding source be programmed for this project rather than expecting assigned departments and agencies to designate their budgetary funds towards this effort. Lastly, in other development master plans created for Guam, 
support from the legislature is imperative. It would be fruitless to use personnel, time, and scarce resources to have a plan summarily rejected by legislation after it is enacted. Therefore, a sitting member of the legislature should be included in the membership of this task force. The Department of Land Management stands ready to take on its role as a member of the Southern Development Master Plan once it is convened. I also want to just add, too, that I'm also, you know, the, uh, the Executive Secretary of the Guam Land Use Commission, and I just wanted to just point out that a couple of the different projects that are ongoing that have been in the news lately, such as the Pago Bay Resort and the Agate Marina, those projects had already gone through the lengthy process for, for obtaining clearances to begin those developments. And in those aspects, all the, all the necessary vetting was done through the application review committee and also through um, notification by public notices for hearings that were both established in the villages and by the Guam Land Use Commission, as well as the mandatory requirements of, of contacting all residents within 500 feet of that project. Now, the issue here is that those things were, were, were decided on a long time ago. Um, there's also one very large development that was decided quite a while ago and still hasn't taken place. And that, that takes up about uh, an area that, that four different municipalities are involved in. And so in that specific case, they had to hold four different separate village meetings. And, and so the Guam Land Use Commission is doing its due diligence in every effort to screen and all these kinds of activities that are ongoing, and they have never been kept from the public at all. Now, in the case of the Pago Bay Resort, that was all already clearly an, an approved project. The issue here before the residents is that the de developer decided to make an alteration to their plans and increase the size of a building, and that's why it's, it's, they had to go through a height variance request. So the Guam Land Use Commission has taken a very active role in this. We also have had recent legislation that was passed, enacted into law, which again, um, expects the mayor ca mayors to be part of the application review committee. In an indirect way, it stated that, but what we have done is we have included the mayor's council of Guam and the respective mayors of that particular village to participate in a formal way. We had always been including them in, as part of the uh, review process, by expecting to receive a, re a, a resolution uh, either for or against the project through a, from their municipal planning council. And that's a very, very important thing. And that's why we do hold these hearings, you know, at, their, at the villages and now with a pending uh, past bill waiting for, um, waiting for the governor's action, this one will ask for two separate hearings in a village level uh, to be held by the mayors. And so, you know, there is, efforts to, for the public to always be notified and to be informed of these kinds of projects. And again, it's, it's in the interest of everyone, whether it's a government landowner or definitely the private landowner, to try and use their properties to the best and highest use that they feel is necessary as well. And I speak as, as, in this respect because, you know, that's the, that's the action that we have to take when we're trying to look at people who are trying to use the properties that they have, that they personally own, but we also expect them to understand that the needs and the desires of the existing community members surrounding that, that uh, um, project are also very important. And in the past, there have been some great compromises. And one very recently was where a resident uh, in, a, in a pretty nice neighborhood in, in Guam wanted to rezone his property to from R1 to R2. He, he had significant opposition from the, from the residents of that community and, and postponed his, his hearings a number of times with the Guam Land Use Commission so he could meet with these residents um, uh, in different forms, especially w along with the mayor of that respective village. And in the end, they came to a compromise, and a compromise that was acceptable to both parties, and the commissioners then were able to, to uh, um, past that, that, that zone change. So there is a lot of work that's done and it, it is the expectation from the Guam Land Use Commission that the developer always have to work and understand what the community's needs are. However, in this long range and large plan, I mean, I believe this, this law that's in the books asked for um, this project to be re-examined every 20 years. And if this, had, if this project, the original De Southern Development Master Plan had been completed, uh, when it was 
the law was first created almost 28 years ago, you know, we would have been at that point uh, where we'd be re-examining the plan again to determine what, if it fits today's picture of what we think should be necessary in the southern part of Guam. But we do stand ready uh, to assist in this task force when, when it does happen again. Thank you very much, um, Senator Morrison. Over to you first. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I thank you all for your testimony. Uh, Mayors and Director Castro, I, um, uh, Mr. Bora, I thank you for your comments. I, I, I wanted to, to uh, ensure uh, uh, that um, with 218 that the mayors had a, a process. I understand the land use uh, commission uh, process and the public hearings, and it's very extensive uh, in, in reaching out into our community and getting their input. Uh, I believe the mayors uh, with 218 uh, uh, would ensure that they can also facilitate their meetings, uh, regardless uh, if they were not directly not the directly impacted uh, jurisdiction. Um, however, it gives those that are ad adjacent to also facilitate their meetings and discussions, uh, and how uh, they will proceed uh, to to inform the land use commission of their their sentiments. Uh, um, you brought up. Uh, the issue of the the cost, and that's why I mentioned in my testimony um, of prior uh, land use plans that were developed by the Bureau of Statistics and Plans um, by the IC ICF Corporation and, and uh, administered and derived by the Coastal uh, Resource Management BSP. And uh, Mr. Castro is here, and I, I I hope we maybe can get some. Uh, statements or something on record that maybe knowing that this process and how it was facilitated before carried out BSP and funded by BSP that uh, this could also be a um, written into the the grants going forward that this knowing what we're attempting to do sure. here is it possible that we can get something uh, from the BSP so to answer your question senator the short short answer is yes um, it's timely as the Bureau is working uh, in close collaboration with the Office of the Governor, as you all know, on the Imagine Guam Initiative, which is a 50-year outlook. Uh, we just completed the second Imagine Guam Convention last Friday. And from that visioning process, which we hope will conclude uh, in the second or third week of March, will come these eight master plans. And we, we, it's a loose number, but anywhere between six and eight, whatever it is that we can uh, um, identify funding resources for. So. In that context, I think the timing couldn't be better. It is possible to utilize coastal and or coral monies to, to bring this uh, Southern Development Master Plan into fruition. And uh, you have my commitment to bring it to the table with the planning staff to see what's possible. And, and I get back to you on that. Yeah. So absolutely. Okay. Thank, thank you, Director. Last question, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Bora, the, I, with these proposed projects, I'm glad you brought it up for the record. So, because you know, that has been tossed around and, and, and uh, with these proposed large-scale projects down in the Southern Committee, particularly in uh, Agat, that these these jurisdictions have been already uh, uh, zoned and, and gone through its process. Uh, you stated that because uh, that was done many decades ago, given the fact that we, we uh, an understanding that land patterns have changed uh, in the last 20 years, 28 years, and seeing some residential activity taking a place around these areas, is there a process in place that will require the commission to re re review, uh, relook at these issues, understanding what was proposed in an area, and looking at what's the land patterns changed in the community as far as residential com uh, community and also other uh, commercial activity that has now been developed? You know, there's a whole nother part when they if they wanted to execute their uh, development they'd still would have to go through a building uh, permit process and again the same people that, that participate in the application review uh, will be the participants who who approve a building permit so for example if they had issues with water now that there's um, you know there may be uh, wastewater issues that may be different because the community size has changed then of course 
there's going to be need, there's going to be new additions to the requirements, new conditions set upon them uh, when they get to that process. They, they can't come in and, and assume that the conditions that they got approved on are the conditions they are today. That happens the same in Tumon. Uh, when you have these kinds of projects that are approved, but because of monetary issues from the company, they have to uh, postpone the development for a period of time. When they get back into it, uh, the power may not be available. So they they then have to find alternate means uh, of of hooking up the power from other sources that were uh, not original that were not uh, um, were, well they couldn't use the existing sources that they thought they could use so you know it's a difference in the money they're going to have to to spend on that if it means building something new um, and so those are the issues that would be brought, would would definitely come to play because the conditions that they decide to build on they are not the same conditions they are when they when they uh, first went through the, uh, the approval process for their plans. Does the Land Use Commission have any ability to put a stop to it? Not necessarily, no. I mean, they do have uh, a review process on some of these other plans uh, that, are, that, that were set as a condition, um, and that's what they do nowadays is they put conditions on some of these individuals to come back again at a period of time to explain what they're doing, especially if they haven't begun the process because they're giving them time limitations so that they're not creating or getting an approval to do something and then 30, 20, 30 years later, they finally come back to do it. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Senator. Senator Ogden? Senator Torres? Zeus Mossy, many of the mayors uh, spoke about wanting to be involved, and you're very convinced that you want to be involved in the planning process of development in the South. And I was wondering, what, what type of development do you believe the mayors should be involved in the planning? Or what type of development should be included in the planning, uh, in your, in, just in your opinion? All development, some development, development of a certain size? Senator, I think anything to, that will impact the community, you know, like that hotel that's coming up. What, what about um, what about residential development? Is that something that also you well, believe is requires the residential long planning? Uh, uh, yes, we are also involved in that. Okay, yes. because one of the things that I notice, um, I live in the south as well. I live mm -hmm. in Santa Rita in the Talisay area, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I was very. Um, I was very hurt when I noticed what is a beautiful, pristine mountainscape in southern Guam, I believe in the Cross Island area, mm -hmm. was leveled, I believe, mm -hmm. for housing development. Oh, I don't know. And I don't know how they issued that mm -hmm. kind of permit, but it, it, for me it was almost Esau the way that it mm -hmm. was done. Are I see those are the things that we're saying. See, I, I, I don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. And if, if that's in the Jonia area or Santa Rita, Santa Rita area. Yeah. See, but you they know, need those to, to let, the, let us know. And, and that's why I ask, because when you think about development, and, and just to be fair, right, people, people acquire property lawfully, mm -hmm. and, they, and they spend money, and they, they go through the proper channels to acquire property. Um, what I don't want is, I don't want to see a, a situation where people that are entitled either through proper zone variances are not afforded the opportunity to develop um, the way that, that, that they're entitled to, right? And we don't want to, we don't want to, to get into a situation where it's, I like this and I don't like that. Because then, then it, it, it's, it's, it's too subjective, right? Mm -hmm. But, but the reason I asked about development is I also know that there are many, there are many residential uses within the villages that perhaps require some level of standard also, you know, standard for safety, standard for nuances, uh, nuance issues for neighbors, that sort of thing. And, and the infrastructure. Yeah, and the very infrastructure. Yeah, very, very important. I mean, they've been building homes and, and they're not looking at what's available. And now that you know we're running short on water in that area, it, it, that that's very important. So your your vision then is, uh, I I just want to be clear because mm -hmm. you talk about wanting to have a say and you're you know you want to make sure that that all considerations are taken into account. But 
I was just thinking if we don't we don't ever want to be in a situation. It's good that we have planned growth, and it's good yes. that we, yes. we understand we're, the balance we're not with nature. Any growth. Yeah. yeah. But but I what I I'm also worried about is while we're looking at the the guy with the deep pockets, that we're not overlooking the rest of us ordinary folks, right? Mm -hmm. That that maybe we should have some regulation as well in terms of what we put up, what we develop. Um, I'm particularly concerned about the topography, you know, because there's there's something charming and 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 idyllic about living in the south. And for me, it was the view where I can have that the beautiful mountain ranges. And right now I look behind my house and mauturi ihilui odut iguaut mauturi so I go I thought half time man ode na and that Baba's incident echo de you know Lee Ian no and then you, you, you could have called bendi. your mayor and and faced the new mayor I look I forgot you know what's going on uh, so that guys we need to mark push star even the mayor probably didn't know. Yeah. You know, those are the things that we're saying. If if we could be informed and then have public meetings so that you can express what you're saying now, yeah. those are the things that are very important. But but I think I think that uh, I would I would definitely be very uh, supportive if if we had an open mind to what is fair and lawful mm -hmm. for all everybody in the community, not just the ones that want to come in and put business. And then then of course we're looking at. Retail business, the mom and pop stores, mm -hmm. the, the grocery stores, the shopping centers, the hotels, and even the the neighborhoods, right? If you're going to develop neighborhoods, yes, things like yes. that. Okay. Now, I just want to, to be clear about who and, you and had you're in right. mind as we a developer. We want to keep the South pristine. We want to keep it where you know we can enjoy the breeze and enjoy the view. That's right. That's what we want to do. And be able to grow our bananas. <laughs> and not have them stolen before you can harvest it. I do. Okay, so Smasi. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you very much to this panel. Senator um, Mayor Tidegui. And also, um, yes, gone. David Chargloff. Mayor. Good afternoon, everybody. Wow, she may have to be from Talfofo, also known as a gas country. For the record, Mr. Chairman, I do support the plan of Bill Number 264-33 LS to, to, keep, to help facilitate the movement of public law 19-38. Investors are interested in developing Southern Guam, but they are unaware of potential conditions our constituents set forth. We need the completion of a master plan for the South so that the task forces can advise potential de developers that do's and that do not. In, uh, and I would like to make one change on, uh, on, uh, on this bill, on the task force membership. I wonder if we could add also the vice mayors as the task force members, mayors and vice mayors of the village. Is that possible? And uh, that's my recommendation, and uh, hopefully we could... Uh, include the vice mayors on this project, on this decision making process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, uh, honorable chairman and uh, members of the, uh, or our, our distinguished uh, senator, Senator Elgin, uh, Senator Morrison, and Senator uh, Camacho. Uh, good afternoon, my name is David Chargloff. I'm a resident of Inarahan and also a candidate for mayor in this year's election. And uh, I'm here in support of Bill 264. I think, uh, you know, for me, um, as a young member of the community, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, really glad and happy that uh, you're giving us an opportunity to sit on the table and, and make, make our voices recognized. And although right now I don't represent the whole village of Inaraha, and I hopefully one day intend to do so, and I think that it's very important that um, 
we as elected leaders uh you know be able to represent our our village and and really um address our concerns because it's uh not just for our future but our the future of our our children as well and i'm I'm really happy that you're allowing us the opportunity to do so thank you very much thank you very much senator morrison senator torres for this group okay if not um you want to any closing from the author Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, I, I appreciate uh, everyone's input today, and I know we've also or we are continuously receiving um, testimony and input on how we can make uh, this process move along. I thank the chairman, and the committee, for uh, all his efforts in pulling uh, putting this forward. I I will stick to my commitment and ensure that he is a co-sponsor as long as Senator <laughs> Torres this, and I will make sure I'm reminded to start off my deliberation with that measure. But I, I also want to point to some of the statements that have been uh, uh, mentioned up here. Um, and I know we're talking about the makeup of the task force, but uh, what's also built into Public Law 19-38 and, and the guidelines that, that are very important, aside from hearing of these large-scale projects or, or, or uh, uh, medium-sized scale projects or all these types of uh, plans that are, are, are being talked about, What's really important here and when you look at public law 19-38 is, is, is the guidelines to this, to this whole de, uh, makeup of developing the plan. And it includes the following areas, infrastructure, including electricity, water, sewage, roads, communication, tourism, population enhancement, commercial development, industry, zoning, Archaeological uh, preservation, ecological protection, and agriculture. So there's a whole list of things that we, we are factoring in aside from just looking at the overall development of, of these, these areas of, of uh, uh, hotels. Or, you know, we're talking about things that I guess I know that make headlines. But importantly, is it, setting up the infrastructure and, and these areas for growth for our communities to sustain themselves down in these areas if they decide to develop in the future. So I just wanted to point out some of the, the, the aspects or the elements of this uh, of this this public law. I, again, there was a lot of forward thinking. I, I, it's my hope that through this task force and working with the committee, the chairman, that we can really drive the discussion, move it, move it forward. Uh, and, and again, that even as you stated here, uh, future leaders or our children would know that uh, we put a plan in place for growth in our, these communities down south and that we can all uh, look to a plan that's acceptable and, and to guide policy makers, decision makers and, and, and developers and those that are looking to, to, to grow these, these, these communities. So um, that is truly my intent here and it's consistent with the intent of, uh, again, our, our forward thinking leaders and I want to keep it within that framework. So I thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Morrison. We'll work with uh, the sponsor and also with the testimony that we receive. I think we receive very good testimony from the mayors and also from the general public. We'll keep the record open for a few more days, um, and then we'll, from there, uh, put the committee report together, okay, and report it out as soon as we could. Uh, this adjourns uh, this public hearing. Uh, the committee would um, reconvene an informational hearing at 6 p.m. tonight, um, exploring the expansion of uh, animal-assisted interventions on Guam. And the public, and you're all welcome to attend. Mayor's been downtown here since this morning, so maybe he'll join us again tonight. Mayor Chargala. All right? Let's do a small seat. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>